Hello and welcome to this video answering a seemingly odd question. Why do olive trees take many years to start producing fruit? It might seem silly as a question, but an olive tree won't make any olives until at least 5 years after you plant it. Sometimes it can take even decades. Even once it starts to produce olives, stable production may not occur until it is 50, 60 or even more years old. If you want to put up a small olive tree in a bonsai exhibition with olives on it for whatever reason, you may not be able to do so for a very long time. The major underlying factor for us to remember throughout this video is just how long an olive can live for. Some specimens we know today are over 5,000 or even 6,000 years old. More conventional time frames are somewhere between 300 and 500 years. Some olive groves will cycle through their olive trees, replacing them roughly every 20 to 30 years. Uh, but this is to maintain extreme production, rather than the tree ceasing to be viable. The long life of an olive is a part of this puzzle, and arguably a major part of this puzzle. The life of an olive tree is not just plant olive, have tree. It is rather more complicated, and it goes through several cycles. These being the seedling stage, the uh, juvenile stage, and the maturing stage with arguably what's considered old age being a less frequently used definition, or stage perhaps. The seedling stage is, well, the initial couple of years, the first one to two years really, and it's when the tree starts growing. Now most trees don't actually go through this part of the cycle. Many are grafted from existing stock and then put straight onto rootstock. In this case, you sort of skip the seedling stage and jump straight to the juvenile stage. This is the 3-5 to five year period, and the tree undergoes rapid growth, but still, no fruit, and that's assuming everything's gone well. You then have the mature stage. Now, it will vary a lot between the particular cultivar or species of olive you have, but this can be beginning anywhere between 5 and 12 years, and it's at this time that the olive tree will start producing fruit. Over the next, in this case, 25 to 18 years, the quantity and to a certain extent quality will improve until it hits about 30 years. Now somewhere between the 30 and 60 year mark the olive tree will decreasingly produce both quantity and quality of olives. Let's assume for now that we're working just on an olive tree out in the open, for example in an olive grove. You can assume that your tree will begin producing fruit somewhere between the 5th year and 12th year. This means that you have to wait a very long time, but other species or sub-cultivars of olive trees can produce them much earlier, as little as just two years. So there's a lot of variability that comes into play, and you're going to understand that this is not a clear-cut question, and certainly the answers are way more varied than we'd appreciate. Because of this, you need to consider not only the stage of the tree, but the particular variety of tree that you'll be looking at. To start with, the seedling stage is perhaps the first and easiest to understand. It takes a long time for the seed within an olive to germinate, and to be blunt about it, any that have been preserved or otherwise handled simply will not germinate. The nature of what you've done will prevent them from doing so. Only fresh seeds will do so, and as a result, the tree takes a long time to get off the ground, and a long time still to really build up momentum and speed. If you're growing it in a pot, this will slow down even further. As you follow on to the next juvenile stage, the olive tree begins to grow a lot more. Now, as mentioned earlier, if this is a uh, scion or a graft, you won't need to worry about that first step so much. And you will still have to worry about the fact that if it's in a pot, you will be delaying its growth or retarding it to some extent. The Growth at this point, presuming that it's gone into the uh, juvenile stage and then into the early maturing stage, you begin to see uh, both flower buds and leafy growth. Now leafy growth is going to be absolutely necessary, and not just necessary for the uh, leaves themselves, but it contributes to the development of flowers. During winter, particularly as the olive tree enters the uh, period of maturity, the uh, tree should be dormant, and this dormancy allows it to set up all the things it needs in place for the early warmth of spring, 
to trigger the various flowering formations and it's the extended duration of that heat that it's exposed to in early spring. Once that happens, those buds begin to open up. Now, the buds will consist of both leaves and flowers, but they will be separate. Leaves tend to be further back on the branch, whereas flowers come out further towards the end of the branch, and it's generally only a small amount of overlap. As with something like, say, cherry trees, the duration of a cold period for dormancy, the amount of uh, duration of heat in early spring for forcing and everything else, will have a significant effect on not only how many flowers the tree produces, but how well they've pollinated and everything else that goes with that. Once the flowers are, let's say, fertilized, the petals will fall off of their own accord, and olives should begin to grow of their own accord now. The key being, though, you're waiting roughly 5 to 12 years. One reason for this major delay is the the tree has to mature and develop the necessary a root network and rest of the development in order to support fruit development. Each year an olive tree will grow somewhere around 30 to 40 centimeters, a little more or a little less depending on seasonality and other variables. That's somewhere around a 12 freedom units or thereabouts. And so it does take a long time to develop what needs to be there to support both flowers and the fruit that follows. It means that your fully mature olive tree, if you aren't maintaining it as a bonsai for example, will get to around 15 meters tall. This is somewhere around 50 feet. The tree itself will now be able to maintain not only flowers and leaves but also fruit. An important caveat to producing fruit is that you will get somewhere around 20 kilograms, sometimes a little bit less, again, sometimes a little bit more each year. And that's for a smaller tree. A larger, more developed tree, for example, one growing in an olive grove or in the ground, that can produce up to somewhere around 50 kilograms of olives a year. This is roughly 100 pounds. The key thing here is, though, that you need to make sure that the tree is both in its peak time frame, that is somewhere around the, uh, let's say, uh, 20 to 50 year mark or thereabouts, and that the tree is being maintained in a way to ensure that you get a consistent, reliable yield of olives, not just a feast one year and a famine the next, followed by feast and then famine. After the roughly 50 years, or again, there'll be some variability, some say up to 80 years, some say 60, you will get less and less olives and the olives won't be as good. What's noteworthy is that different cultivars and different varieties of olive will behave differently. For example, if you have Arbicina, this is a much smaller tree and it will grow much quicker. Because of this, it tends to produce olives sooner, but those olives are mostly used to produce oil, not so much for eating. The Kalamata, on the other hand, are much larger, and they're typically a much slower growing tree, and so you'll get them much later, but you get arguably more olives from each tree. A mission is largely going to be a mixed bag. It's useful for both oils and eating olive oil eating olives. The key here is that uh, because you're getting uh, both products and from a more medium sized tree rather than the larger Kalamata, it is a little bit earlier in that you'll get fruit arguably, but the problem with this is that, well, you're actually not getting as great, uh, well, let's say, as great an olive for either example. And then finally you have a picoline. This is a medium sized tree and so Similar to the Mission variety, you'll get your olives sooner, but although the olives are flavorful, they're mostly used for oil rather than for eating as is. Let's now look at what happens to actually get the fruit itself. The flowers will show up in late spring. As we mentioned earlier, they generally show up on the end of branches or on new branches that are forming. They'll be small, they'll be white, and they should have a slight fragrance to them. They don't necessarily need to be pollinated by bees or similar. The wind can do this, understand. You don't need uh, insects to pollinate. It's helpful, certainly, but it's not necessarily true that you have to have them. 
Each tree itself can produce many, many flowers. But it's important that either not all of them set, or even if they try to, that you do actually remove these excess fruit set. Otherwise you'll get smaller fruit and it won't do as well this year. One way nature takes care of this without you having to do it is with moisture and heat. Heat will drive off the moisture and because of this the pollination won't happen. Whereas if there's enough moisture in the air, the olive will self-pollinate. Another thing you can try to do is uh, uh, plant out a mixture of olives. Understand, as mentioned earlier, most of the time you are not going to plant olive seeds to get new olive trees. It's going to be done through grafting. Because of this, having different olive varieties should improve cross-pollination. Once the flower has been pollinated, you should get fruit beginning to develop. The fruit actually takes a very long time to mature, anywhere between 6 and 8 months. Now, this will vary a lot based on environmental conditions, the particular variety of olive, and so on. The olive initially begins out as a, a small green fruit, and gradually gets larger and darker. For the best selection, assuming you want to have them as a display thing and you're not going to eat them, when you want to eat them though, you want to select oil production when the olives are a purplish colour, that way you'll get the most flavour and the most oil. However, if you wish to eat them, so have a table olive, you want them when they're still a little bit green or just beginning to change colour. We mentioned earlier the issues around feasting and famine if you don't maintain the olive correctly, and this is another factor that can contribute significantly to whether or not you actually get good flower set and then good fruit set. You need to ensure that you prune the olive tree in such a way that you get enough flowers and enough fruit that year that it's a healthy, happy tree at the end of that. This, if you don't follow it, leads to a situation that's called alternate bearing, that is heavy bearing one year and light bearing the next. You do this by ensuring that any olive tree that you're growing has a small number of main scaffold branches, that is, in case of bonsai, having a smaller number of, let's say with an informal upright or formal upright, left, right and back branches. For other styles, you'll need to adjust accordingly. In doing so, you can ensure that the branches are cut back enough that you get the right growth, that the new growth occurs and therefore you get flowers, and importantly, that the growth is directed into those new branches and therefore you get fruit and flowers. One thing to be mindful of, if you get flowers and fruit in one place, you will not get them in that same location ever again. It is reasonably definitive that an olive tree will never set fruit in the same place it's already set fruit before. There is one major caveat to everything we've said so far, and this may or may not have uh, just destroyed any hope you had. If you're waiting on your olive tree to grow fruit and nothing seems to happen no matter how many years it's been, you might be out of luck. Some olive trees are specifically bred to be fruitless. That is, they are sterile. They will never set fruit. They'll probably never set flowers. As such, these olive trees aren't really good for much, for anything except possibly hedging. Now, you can certainly use them as a display, but to be clear about that, there's nothing stopping it, it's just you will never get fruit if that's your intention. And certainly for some exhibitions, having a nice shiny fruit like an apple, a plum, a cherry, it can be very stunning. Olives are far more subdued, but seeing real fruit on a tree is something that a lot of people find really fascinating when it comes to bonsai. This should give you some idea as to why it is that olives don't produce fruit for a long time. Mostly it is simply that the tree is very slow to get going when it comes to flower bud development, followed by fruit set and finally getting a decent yield. It's simply a very slow moving species. That means everything that it does is just that much slower to happen, whether it is growing, maturing, or making flowers and then fruit. Of course, this also applies to the final end result of any living organism, that being death. That's why olive trees live for hundreds if not arguably thousands of years. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please do post any comments, questions, or suggestions you have below.